If you watched our previous video, we tried to unravel what the wealthy and the aristocrats and the royals used to eat in the medieval Arab world. But today, let's look at what Arab peasants ate in the medieval times. Welcome to the Golden Middle Age. Before I start, I want to say Ramadan Kareem. I hope you have a blessed holy month. And as you can see, this video is about food which might not be the best time but we're in this together and if you want you can watch this after you break your fast and do make sure you stay until the end because we're going to try some medieval food that was eaten by peasants in the arab world and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so hit the like button turn the notification bell on it really helps the channel grow thank you very much as you already know the arab world during the medieval period was vast and diverse and covering a wide range of climates and geographies Despite these differences, there were some commonalities in what peasants ate during this period. The vast amount of cookbooks that were being produced between the 10th and the 13th century are most likely tailored to the wealthy classes. So this makes it slightly harder to find out what an average peasant's diet was. Also, many historians have said that in the medieval Arab and Islamic world, the peasant has no voice and is invisible, which also makes it difficult to establish what their life was like. Was it what the common conception is of medieval peasants, whereby their diet consisted of bland, grubby food? But it's actually quite the opposite. You have to think about it in this way. Peasants in the medieval times, no matter where they are in the world, lived very physical lives. They had to work on the fields and produce livestock. Especially in the medieval Islamic world, they had advanced irrigation systems they had to maintain. In order to be able to keep up with this very physical working lifestyle, you needed food that was nutritious and food that would give you energy. Sure, it might not have been as exotic with the abundance of options, but it was healthy and quite filling. Also in the medieval Islamic world, the variety of foods that were available was a lot. It was very diverse, ranging from meats, grains, fruits and vegetables with many different spices as well. A good source where you can find the food of the masses is something called the Hisba Treaties. You can also look at the street food that was offered in the markets. Markets in the medieval Arab and Islamic world were full of vegetables, meat, fish and local fruits. There was also many preserved foods in the markets and the way to preserve them was to pickle them in vinegar and salt alongside other condiments, which is something that's very common nowadays as well. In the sulk, which is the Arabic word used for markets, there was a specific theme of food which was focused on. It was organized by the merchants. Therefore, looking at the Hezbah treaties and the food in the markets, what did Arab peasants eat in the medieval time? Let's start with the basics, bread. Bread was a staple food in the Arab world and whether peasants would bake them at home or in communal ovens depended on whether they had one at home. Bread nowadays is called Aish in certain parts of the Arab world, which literally translates to life. That's how important bread was for the medieval peasants. And could this word used for bread have its origins from the medieval times? That's another question. They used wheat or barley flour mixed with water and yeast and baked it in communal ovens or in clay pots over an open fire. It's known as a forum. The bread was usually round or flat and served with olive oil or cheese. And the difference between the rich and poor was that the bread for the poverty stricken population was made from unrefined flour, rich in bran, consequently making it rough. It was known as khubiz khushkar. It was basically brown bread, which is a healthy option people opt for nowadays. And it's quite interesting to find out you're eating bread peasants used to eat in the medieval times. Another fascinating form of bread the poor used to eat was kak, a bread eaten in the Arab world today as well. Kak is a round shaped ring bread and if you look at the Arab world today, it has sesame seeds on it and is eaten in many different ways. You can put zata rouzet, thyme and olive oil inside it or cheese and some places like Lebanon put knefe in the kak, a well-known dessert in the Middle East which originates from Nablus in Palestine. It's very popular and is sold in the streets of the Middle East Well, it was also eaten in the medieval times. The wheat was mixed with water then baked, they added sugar butter, rose water and musk. Simple and cheap as it is in today's world, peasants would eat this. Other foods included sambusak, which we all know is eaten in the Arab world and also in many other parts of the world. And it's basically stuffed pastries, either with meats or cheese. Dried fruits were available in abundance, specifically dates. They were given out for free with bread 
as they were so available and also gave you energy and nutrition. It also has religious significance as the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to break his fast on dates. Speaking of sweet foods, peasants would also eat fried dobles dipped in honey, which I think is known as awame in today's world. Awame is literally the same thing but dipped in sugar syrup. It's amazing to see how many Middle Eastern dishes in our current world had their origins from the medieval times and possibly even before that. What peasants would also eat was rice. This was regarded as food for the masses. Rice came into the Arab world from Persia in the 8th century, firstly introduced to Iraq, then Syria and Egypt. Rice was used in many ways. It was served with fish or made into pudding like Riz bil Halib, which is a dessert of rice and milk and sugar. It replaced wheat flour during hard times. Additionally, it was given out in the mosque during the Friday prayers. Another common food was things like lentils, chickpeas and beans. They were cheap and abundant and could be cooked in a variety of ways such as in stews or soups. Vegetables were also important, especially in the summer months when they were in season. Peasants would grow their own vegetables such as cucumbers, eggplants and onions and would use them in salads or cooked dishes. Meat was not as common in the peasant diet as it was expensive and often reserved for special occasions. However, peasants would sometimes eat lamb, goat or chicken, either as a stew or roasted over an open fire. But fish was popular in coastal regions where it was abundant and cheap. So that's a brief overview of what Arab peasants ate in the medieval times. While their diet might seem simple compared to the rich of their society, it was very nutritious and adapted to the resources available to them. Well, that's enough of me talking and let's get eaten. Okay, so we have a few dishes that we're going to try and they resemble what a medieval Arab peasant would have eaten. It's now past midnight, I've broken my fast and we could consider this as sahur. So the main dish we're going to have is this, which is rice with beans cooked in tomato sauce and many herbs and spices. As, as we said earlier, rice, lentils, beans, fish were popular foods for the masses and for peasants and the lower classes in the medieval Arab world. They were widely available. And this is a dish that I actually grew up eating and still do eat. And I'm not saying I'm a peasant, but this shows us how Arab cuisine has really held to its tradition and its past and how medieval food, whether it be for the wealthy classes or the poorer classes, has survived until today's age. So we're going to eat this. We also have some bulsak. As we discussed, this was another food that was eaten by peasants and was widely available for the general population in the medieval Arab world and something that is also eaten nowadays as well. We have some bulsak with cheese and some bulsak stuffed with spinach, both in a triangle shape, both fried as it was in the medieval times. We also have standard flat brown bread, wholemeal bread, and for dessert, we have something called halawat al riz Again, this is a rice-based dessert, which again illustrates how rice was used by peasants in, in not only their main course, but also their desserts, as it was widely available. So it's a rice dessert with milk and sugar mixed together with other ingredients like rose water. And as I said, these are all foods that are still widely eaten in the Middle Eastern world today. So we'll start off with a sambusak of jibna, so cheese uh, sambusak. These are amazing, right? Especially during Ramadan. And what's really nice about them is the softness of the cheese from the inside, but the crunch of the pastry from the outside. It's, it's absolutely delicious. We'll go into having a spinach sambusak. As you can see, this is the inside. Um, just to say, this food could be served up in restaurants. Right, we're saying it's medieval peasant food, but actually it's eaten a lot nowadays and it's actually regarded as very, very healthy. It's very nutritious, right? We have spinach here. We have cheese. And now we'll get onto the rice and beans. And it's all full of flavor. It's all 
nutritious, it's all healthy and, and I could see why peasants would eat this if you have a very physical lifestyle, working in the fields, growing crops, harvesting, this is, you need this food and it's so, so good. Now we'll grab some bread and also the etiquette of eating is pretty much the same. It all came from the Islamic tradition and from the Holy Prophet whereby you eat with your hands, you always eat with your right hand as well, sitting down on the floor and before you eat you say Bismillah and I forgot to say Bismillah before I started eating so <laughs> apologies about that. So we're going to try the main dish now, the rice with uh, the beans cooked in with, with tomatoes and many different herbs and spices aka fasulia bris this is this is so so good again full of flavor very nutritious it's one of my childhood favorites as well mm. have some cheese eating this food and look at it, this food it wasn't that bad being a peasant <laughs> in the medieval Arab world if you had food like this. And what I like about this, it's very simple. We'll go on to the dessert now, halawat al riz, and it's decorated with pistachios. Oh, this is this is great. I mean, you don't even have to chew this; it literally melts in your mouth. Fantastic! Wow. I mean. If you had this food as a peasant in the medieval Arab world, this was served in in sweet shops, in restaurants with desserts, and it's, it's so interesting to see how this has survived from the medieval times until nowadays. Arab cuisine, it's so rich, so rich in, in, in tradition and culture. I can't, I can't get enough of this. <laughs> Overall, this is food which is very very delicious and very simple and I could see why peasants would eat this it's ingredients that they had access to such as rice grains beans uh, pastries cheese vegetables spinach dairy such as milk brown bread and with all these ingredients you can make this delicious nutritious food which will fill you up and give you so much energy to work throughout the day thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed Please do make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and Ramadan Karim. We will see you again very soon.